Let's work on today's technique. For more information, click on the link below. Welcome to Good Knit Kisses. We're all about helping you stitch your love and love your stitches. This is a sample of what it was like on the needles. And so I just took my needle sample from the video and I popped it on the loom so you can see what it looks like. And then I made it on, um, I, I, then I did it on the, on the loom. And I'm going to explain why this looks a little different from this. But this is, this is the sample that I knit on the loom. And this is the sample that is um, needle knit. So it is a three color design. You see that? So we're working with color A and then C and then B. So this week we're working with three colors. Okay, and uh, thank you. We've got the clue up now. Uh, we've got uh, in the comments uh, below is the uh, link to the um, webpage. Okay, so I've got two samples on here right now just so that you can see that. And this is what the back looks like. Okay, nice and loose. And then here's the back of the loom knit sample. All right, so let's just compare for a second before we get really started. This is a 12 stitch pattern repeat. Um, this one you're seeing uh, two, two repeats, okay? I'm not 12 stitch, I'm so sorry. This is a 12 row pattern repeat, okay? And then um, I gotta get more length on this yarn that's next to me here. I don't know why I'm having such an issue with the yarn. Okay, uh, <clears throat> so what I did is I wanted to see what that looked like. So this is um, this is a repeat here, and I worked with um, I, I worked with uh, unit stitches, and then I have some uh, slipping stitches in front of the pegs, and this is without um, e wrapping that. So this is a normal u wrap with um, without e wrapping it, and it looks very similar to this except it doesn't have as much length or height right would you agree hit that like button if you would agree to that um, but it looks really nice then I tried it with um, let's get it closer so see what that looks like and then see what that looks like okay now this is 21 if I remember correctly that's 21 and then this is 11 so I just I just did 11 pegs here um, so uh, this one right here is where I changed it and then I started where I'm holding the yarn in front of the peg I e-wrapped it to give it a little more length but I don't think the bumps are as pronounced and I was also very loose with my u-wrap so um, you might want to like do an experiment and cast on 11 like I did just to get um, just to get a good sample going and see which way you like it. So if you like them more pronounced, you may um, you may not want to e-wrap it. You may want to do that and you just need longer length because what we're doing this week is we're making a panel in this stitch pattern and the width is fine, but it's the length that we need. And then um, the... Uh, um, I can't even talk. <laughs> Sorry, I got a notification on my phone. Uh, so the the length the width is fine, but the length is what is going to change. But you only you need to knit 48 inches this week. So if you like it more pronounced, um, then don't worry about it being a shorter stitch. I think it looks nice. Okay, so do you see how that looks? But it's like a flatter look. It's really kind of cool looking, but it does have a less pronounced look. All right. So I just wanted you to see that first of all. All right, let me get my sample ready here. Now that I've thoroughly got everything <laughs> out of whack, turning this over. Okay, those are those samples there. Now, um, you can cast on in either direction. Um, this week, um, when you look at the pattern, um, let me let me get this out right now. Okay, let me see if I can. I don't know if I can get it. Um, move that aside so you can see it. So when we scroll down on the blog, scroll all the way down. That's there. It's embedded here. That's for the needles, and then this is the notes for loom knitters here, and this is clue four. Um, okay, so. Row one starts uh, with um, A and then we purl and we slip with yarn in front of the peg. 
right here. Now, on the pattern, it starts row A on the wrong side for needles, and this is the only week that it does that. So if you've been paying attention so far, um, I have been starting my, um, my row one on the right and then working my way to the left, but I had to cast on um, uh, in, a, in that way. Uh, so I, I'm doing it a little bit different this week, and I'm working my um, I'm working my rows just slightly different. So um, I've got to fix my lighting here. I'm going to set this over to the side here in a second, but let me just go over the the 12 row repeat. So we'll be working with a pearl. So you can work in either direction, okay? And it's casting on 27 stitches in A, which is gray for me. Row one is with A, we're going to purl, and then we slip with the yarn in front of the peg. So we just hold that yarn in front of the peg, and then we purl, and then we repeat back and forth until you get to the end of the row. So every other peg is going to have two lines on it, going to have two stitches on it. Okay, it's, it's really, it's slipped. Now, normally on needles, it's actually going to be worked, but on the, um, on this, particular pattern, we're knitting one below on the next row, and so we're treating it as a setup row, the row before, by slipping it. Otherwise, you'd have a hard time grabbing it. So we've done this before on, uh, I think it was week two, and, um, what was it, week one? Anyway, we, we, had, to, we had to set up, um, yeah, week two. Okay, so then after you set up in A, you switch, you go ahead and switch to C, okay? Then you knit one and knit one below. So where you had skipped every other peg, that's where you knit one below. And then again with C, so you go one way um, knitting. We're going to go from right to left. Um, uh, yeah, knitting across. And then the next row is the setup row when we're going left to right. And we'll be setting it up again in the same color. And um, we'll be starting with purl two and slip with the yarn in front of the peg and then purl one and every other one. So you can see like we skipped every other peg was a setup before and then we um, start with the purl two to shift it over and then it'll be every other peg. So we're shifting it every other time and then we change colors. We change for three different colors. So anyway, when I get back with color C and go back to the right, then I will add B and then I work all those pegs that were set up. And then I set up with B and I purl once instead of twice, okay? And then we just zigzag back and forth. And it is a 12 row repeat. But the cool advantage is on the loom, once you kind of get the pattern in your head, you actually don't need to worry about, oh, what, what pattern repeat am I on? Because it becomes intuitive. It's actually easier on the loom to remember what you're grabbing next. And you just simply are grabbing the next yarn and rotating it out. So that's what I'm going to show you off camera here. So let me see if there's any questions before I move on. If you're just joining me, I'm sorry. I'm like a heavy breather today. <laughs> I'm still not feeling well, so... I'm having a little bit of a trouble. Okay. All right. Let me get my, um, I've got to get my light back, back up because I messed it up. So hold on a second, you guys. It is messed up and it's way in front of me. Okay. There we go. <coughs> I'm so sorry. This is live. <laughs> If I was recording, you wouldn't hear any of this junk. <laughs> All right. I need to get my yarn settled. Okay, now, a hint. You're working with three colors, and I'm starting, yes, I'm starting in the middle of the row, um, but uh, I want to say that you're going to start, see my, my tail is on the right here. If you want to work the way I'm working, what I did is I started my cast on. I did a double um, E-wrap cast on, and I put my first peg here, and then I double E-wrap cast on all the way down to 11 for my sample, but 27 is what you actually need for, um, for your, for your uh, actual knitting. And then I went all the way down to here, and row one starts here. Okay, so I've already set this up. Your cast on row gets that first edge. So you notice like every color is two rows. So the cast on here imitates that first 
part of that color, okay? So now I'm gonna go with my setup row, which is row one. All right, so after all that, now I'm finally getting into it. But um, I've got my color that I'm working with on the left here. And I'm gonna go ahead and talk about this just for a second so it's easier when I get to it. But my other two colors are right here. They are, hang on, these two, okay? So what I've done is I've got them over on this side in the order that I need them next. So when I'm done, I'll rotate this over here and then I'll grab the next color to be used. And that can be off the side. I, you don't, I know every, not everybody works on a table. I'm just doing it on a table because, well, that's, that's what's happening for this tutorial here. Um, let me get untangled because I had to move this from where the place I was working. <laughs> Sorry, I'm still setting up. When I flipped it over, I got it all messed up. Okay. There we go. Okay. Row one. Let's set it up. So we're going to start with a pearl. Okay. Pearl one. Let's zoom in. Pearl one. And now we're going to slip with the yarn in front of the peg. That's it. You're just holding it in front and then we knit or I'm sorry we, we purl the next page the next peg like this okay and then we skip this peg so you're slipping with the yarn in front of the peg and you purl this one so it makes it real easy you're just doing every other one see that so if you want to um, have it more elongated you could e-wrap these pegs in between you could do this so if you're testing it for yourself I suggest doing a couple of the 12 peg repeats and and do that right there like that and if you want to make it less than um, 11 you could try seven uh, for a smaller sample here so I'm gonna go ahead and hold it in front just so you can see literally what it is I know that Joanne Gay has tested her she did it on a kiss loom and so um, it's going to be uh, more like a e-wrap because I mean uh, more of a u-wrap because it's just it's working it all through there okay and then oops okay that was purled and then we hold this one we're coming down to the last one and then this is held in front and then we purl okay so left to right is the setup and again you can work in opposite direction if it's easier for you you see how these are all just held I didn't work them okay Row two, we're going to grab uh, our uh, next yarn. Um, let's see. And we're going to do C. So let's move my A over. And then I want to grab from the bottom this one. So look here, I'm grabbing from the bottom. This is when you are changing color, but when you add the first color in, all you do is you just um, lay it in front like this and just work it. So, and then leave that tail. So, so you can see how my tails did it here. And then as I grab them from the side, like I was showing you, see how it like braids it up the side. And then this side, it looks like this over here. So it's very similar looking, see that? There's no loose ends to take care of. And then these edges are going to get taken care of later on. That's all I'll say about that. So that was a hint. <laughs> all right. So uh, now I'm going to work with um, C and I'm going to knit one. And then I'm going to knit one below. And all I'm doing is holding my yarn back here for a unit stitch. And I'm grabbing both stitches that were held over and knitting that over. Let me back up a little bit. Okay, hold on. I'm so sorry. I'm going to have to. So sorry. Okay. And then we knit. And you're just knitting across. And you're grabbing those two yarns that were being held. And knit across. That's it. It's real simple. So knit across. It's so knit one, knit one below, knit one, knit one below. Now I'm on the other side. I'll pull out some more yarn for my next row, and this is going to be a setup row. So I continue on the same one that I just did when I'm setting it up. Okay? 
So now I'm going to look at my pattern, and my pattern says to um, purl two, because remember this one had two stitches here. So now I'm going to um, make it shift, and I'm going over to this third stitch is where it's being held. So I'm going to purl one, two, and then I skip this first one, slip with the yarn in front of the peg, and then I purl this one. So you will notice that it's shifted from the row that you do before. So you'll get to a point where when you are knitting and you're working your way back here where you know, okay, I'm just knitting everything. Um, before you finish these last few pegs, take a look and notice what has been held before so you can know what to work next. Now, after you do a few rows where you've been paying attention to the pattern, then you'll start to notice, um, you'll start to note, I don't know, see, I just worked this one because I'm talking and not doing it. Okay, I'm gonna hold that one. Then you'll start to notice um, that shaping up and then how that works for you. So let's go down here. When you get down to the end, you've got two at the end that get purled to finish out that row. So it's two stitches inward, doop, two stitches inward, and then um, uh, then it slipped, okay? And now I, um, I'm gonna drop this yarn, I'm gonna move this over, and I'm gonna rotate my next yarn over to the left here so that I can work it. I know I'm just working with this one, and then I kind of move my yarns down. Okay, and then that way my yarns don't get all crisscrossy, right? They're just gonna, they're not gonna get all jumbled up. Okay, so now I'm gonna work these stitches. I'm just gonna bring this next yarn up, and if you're adding the yarn just like you did before, you're just gonna leave a nice tail and hold this here and then work that first stitch. But for now, because I'm working with yarns being twisted, I'm just pulling up that next one and it naturally causes that braid. Let's just work across, knitting all the stitches. But it reads, knit two, knit one below, knit two, knit one below, and then all the way to the end until you have two left, and then you knit two. And I'm using color B. Okay. And now I'm going to set up again, and because I had the two at the end, now I'm going to do how many? The one. So we're going to purl one and slip that yarn in front of the peg and then purl the next one. Slip it, purl, slip it, purl, slip it, purl, and again, you could e-wrap those, slip it, and purl. That's it. Now rotating again, moving it over, grab the next one. This is now back on to A, and I'm going to knit it, and knit it, one below, knit, knit one below. So if we had not held these I would have to come back here and pick up a stitch from the back and place it on here and then do it. So we've gotten rid of all those gymnastics. So on the loom, this is an ideal pattern. So it, you're not having to do that. So with the setup, it, it's real easy. There's no struggle finding that stitch below. It's just, it's all gravy. <laughs> so now I've done that. Whoops. Let me fix that. <clears throat> and so this one was um, knitting two stitches here. Okay, that's that knit one below here. So now we know, now I'm back on this other color again because we were down here before when we started. And now I know to I go to shift back over to the right. So what do we do? We purl two. So purl one. Purl two, and now we slip with the yarn in front of the peg and continue on. Remember, it's still every other peg being slipped in the main body of this. It's just shifting 
on the edges. So what you're doing is you're kind of making a garter stitch because every other row is knit or purl, but it doesn't really look like a garter stitch. All right, so now I'm back and I need to go with C again. So I rotate my yarns and I move this C over here. You can see how if you have like a, a bucket to your side or something, a bowl, um, you can just move them around and see how my yarn is not getting tangled at all. And then I just start with my C and continue. So I'm not even looking at my pattern now. And yes, I have worked this several times, but I, because of the way this pattern is set up, it's really intuitive. So you'll get it once you get, you know, first looking at the pattern written out, you're like, oh man, this is going like, to take me a while. And you can get yourself a row counter and, and, and you can print this off and kind of check it off and go through the first um, maybe 24 rows and you can do that. But after a while, you're going to start noticing what I was showing you. Okay, so let's flip it over. I'm going to show you again. Okay, so again, if you're slipping with the yarn in front of the peg, just as I do, without e-wrapping, it's going to look more like this. If you look at this part, this is where I had experimented making it a unit stitch. Now, look again. Now, I'm at, up here. I had This is where I had started today, because I did this last night with the unit stitch, and then before that, I did the... Um, the uh, just holding it in front of the peg. Now you can see, see, see how it's like popping out a little bit more. And um, you can also like be sure and stretch out it afterwards and like pull on it and they, they kind of pop out too. So I noticed that um, this one, when I um, pulled on it, it actually popped out my stitches a little bit more. See how they're more pronounced? So remember that as you get more knitting on, it's gonna be more true. Or you can take it off of the pegs with the stitch holder or like a scrap piece of yarn and kind of play with it and really see. Because when the stitches are up close to the loom, you know that it, it pulls it really tight and it's more um, obscured. It's not, it's not how it really is going to be when it's living off of the loom. Cause on the loom, it's just, it's going to be stretched. And that's just the natural, um, that's the natural tendency with the loom. Okay. So that is what that looks like. That's really all you need to know. I don't even have to go through all 12, um, all 12 rows. Thanks for joining us today where we help you stitch your love and love your stitches. See you again soon.